Hello, my name is Dana Chanin, clinical professor at the University of Michigan School of Nursing. As nursing education transitions towards competency-based education, the AACN Essentials Framework guides us to ensure graduates are prepared for clinical practice by demonstrating proficiency across multiple domains, competencies, and sub-competencies. Since nursing practice touches every essentials domain and involves multiple competencies and subcompetencies simultaneously, it's important to note that competency-based assessment must focus on integrated practice, not isolated skills or one and done type checklists. This is why clustering competencies and subcompetencies is critical for experiential learning to prepare students for real world practice. In this video, I'd like to share an example of how multiple AACN essential subcompetencies can be clustered into a single signature assessment to enhance both student learning and faculty efficiency. It's important to remember that work of essentializing the curriculum and transitioning to CBE really begins at the program level. Faculty and leadership must first align program outcomes with the AAC and essential domains and collectively identify those progression indicators, which are those observable behaviors that show progression to and attainment of each of the sub competencies. Think about it as what students should be able to do. You can use the progression indicators from AACN that have been vetted by national consensus of faculty and practice partners or faculty within your institution can work with practice partners to develop their own. The key is that faculty, preceptors, and students all know what behaviors are expected and are assessing the same behaviors across courses, really promoting that consistency in graduate performance and increasing that readiness for clinical practice. Faculty should map the subcompetencies across the curriculum intentionally aligning them with course and learner outcomes. This process clarifies where and how students will have opportunities to practice and demonstrate those expected behaviors at the appropriate developmental stage. Again, ensuring that consistency between outcomes and competency expectations. Once the programmatic work has been done, faculty can cluster the sub-competencies together into robust, integrated, formative, and summative assessments within their respective courses. At the University of Michigan, we designed a capstone quality improvement project that requires students to identify a clinical problem, create, implement a quality improvement plan, and evaluate presenting findings, all while reflecting on ethical considerations for practice improvement. This single assignment aligned with multiple course specific objectives and allowed us to assess attainment of sub competencies across three essential domains, scholarship for nursing profession, quality and safety and systems based practice. Throughout this project, students engage in formative assessments, applying literature appraisal, data analysis, QI methodology and ethical reasoning. Formative feedback is essential as there should be no surprise in our summative assessments. Students can receive this feedback, formative feedback in multiple ways within the course or even in previous courses as they have had the opportunity to practice the competencies being assessed before that final summative assessment. Ultimately, by clustering subcompetencies, we can assess multiple subcompetencies that are aligned with course outcomes within a single capstone project, giving students the opportunity to demonstrate what they can do, not just what they know. I hope this example helps you in considering ways to cluster subcompetencies. This approach provides meaningful longitudinal assessment, can maximize student learning and make summative assessment much more feasible for faculty. By clustering subcompetencies, we also reflect those realities of clinical practice where multiple competencies are applied simultaneously while still supporting student progression and competency attainment in an efficient, organized manner. As you continue your journey on essentializing your curriculum and transform up the AACN Essential Toolkit for additional resources,